総理、福島県民は重い荷物を5つも背負って歩いています。地震、津波、原発事故、風評被害、そして会津地方の豪雨災害です。それなのに、総理が先日の代表質問に対する答弁で、福島県民に対する一車両は、すでに紛争審査会で決まったと、それだけ言って終わりにしたときには、さすがに私も憤りを感じ抗議をしました。苦しみも悲しみも言えるどころかますます強くなっています。それは、除染も、賠償も、仕事も学校も病院も、何もかも一向に進まないからなんです。総理、福島県民を、見捨てるのですか福島県民は全員慰謝料をいただく権利があると思っています。本日はその中でも無用の被爆を受けた子どもたちの質問をします。この質問、毎回質問して、今日で4回目ですけれども、政府は先月も調査中という、隠しているとしか思えない答弁なので、今日は参考人を連れてきました。政府が避難指示を出さなかったことにより、屋外で被爆した女の子、ここに人型があります。そのお父さんです。ご本人も強い被爆を受けています。でも残念ながら、参考人の陳述は、本日、認められませんでした。子供が被爆した事実を、政府が8ヶ月経っても調査中。国会の調査委員会もまだ始まっていない。それなのに、国民の代表であるこの国会で取り残されて被爆した本人も陳述が認められない。信頼性ないって、あの場に取り残された1回目の被爆600人、2回目の被爆1万人を全員この場に連れてきたら、信頼性があるって言うんですか A huge amount of debris along Japan's eastern coast has been hampering the activity of fishing boats following the March tsunami. The government says it will complete clearing away the debris by March 2014. The wreckage of houses, boats and vehicles is still drifting at sea or has sunk to the bottom along a wide stretch of the coast. The debris is impeding navigation of vessels in and out of ports and fishing activities which have resumed since the disaster. The Environment Ministry and the Land and Transport Ministry have informed surrounding prefectures of the guidelines they have worked out for clearing away the debris. The guidelines say the salt content of debris in seawater may cause corrosion of incineration facilities and that wood debris should be exposed to the elements after being collected to get rid of salt before burning. The ministries plan to send officials to the affected areas to provide technical advice if requested by local governments. Farmers and food retailers are selling their products, including some from areas hit by the March disaster, at a food fair now underway in Tokyo. The fair opened on Saturday. Participants from around the country offered their wares at more than 80 booths. The booth of an agricultural cooperative from Miyagi Prefecture served skewered grilled beef. The staff assured customers that no radioactive substances have been detected in the beef. A retailer of fisheries products in Tokyo sold squid and mackerel from Miyagi. A grilled salted mackerel sandwich was especially popular among the visitors. The China Syndrome. It's about people, people who lie, and people faced with the agony of telling the truth. Right. People like Kimberly Wells, a television reporter paid to smile, not to think. A few words about a veterinarian who makes house calls on sick fish. Or is it aquarium calls? Richard Adams, a cameraman who never learned how to play by the rules. Wait till you get in that other room, get that radiation all over that cute little body. Jack Goodell, an engineer who knows too much to tell the truth. In anything that man ever does, there's some element of risk, right? Well, that's why we have what we call defense in depth. And cares too much to lie. No accident. It will start with a tremor in a nuclear power plant. Where it will end will depend on three people. I would say you're probably lucky to be alive. Same for the rest of Southern California. Jane Fonda. Let's face it, you didn't get this job because of your investigative abilities. Kimberly, don't fight it. Jack Lemon. There was a vibration. 
Michael Douglas. I don't know that accident is the right word. Accident is the right word. The China Syndrome. The harder they try, the more resistance they meet. They've got their own security man. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you want me to make it any clearer? The closer they get, no. the more threatening it becomes. No. The China no. Syndrome. Today, only a handful of people know what it really means. And they're scared. Everybody keep your strength! Everybody keep your strength! Soon, you will know. The China Syndrome. In 2007, the U.S. Department of Agriculture and Homeland Security funded a proposed project to aerial spray over seven million people in urban areas of Northern California. After citizens organized against the plan, officials were forced to reveal that the spray included multiple toxins that can cause disease and disrupt the reproductive cycle. Fortunately, civil resistance stopped the project. The U.S. government has been caught over 30 times covertly experimenting with toxic chemicals on its own citizens, from soldiers, prisoners, and Native American reservations to entire towns and counties. Mass covert sterilization of women and girls, usually using secret additives to vaccines, has been exposed in Brazil, Puerto Rico, Nicaragua, Mexico, and the Philippines. These have been under the auspices of such programs as John D. Rockefeller's Population Council, the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, where Nelson Rockefeller was undersecretary, and the Rockefeller-founded World Health Organization. Novartis and Syngenta, in cooperation with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Department of Defense, have field-tested a spermicidal strain of GMO corn that would render male consumers infertile. This was quietly announced as a contribution to the world overpopulation problem. The list goes on and on. Right now, global human fertility is plunging. I'm convinced that this is no accident. For me, being willing to consider and research a direct depopulation agenda was critical to my getting the whole picture and to generating responses that could be sufficient to the task we face. I know this may sound crazy, but imagine that it's 1932 and we're in Germany. If I told you that in the next decade millions of people would be exterminated, you would say impossible. No one would do such a thing. This is what depopulation looks like today. I'm convinced that I'm not overstating the case.